morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a health challenge that you or a loved one is dealing with, we can help you deal with it. We can help you. We can provide you with some answers. We can help you deal with pretty much any health challenge via nutritional supplement program. If you want to wean yourself off your meds, if you have questions about ingredients or formulations, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the Truth Treatment products, Truth Treatment Skin Health products, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Okay, welcome back to the Brightside. Once again, we're talking about fascinating fats. There's so much to talk about when it comes to fats. And especially when it comes to fats and skin health, the list of skin health issues that are linked to fats and essential fats, essential fatty acids, fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K include rashes, dry skin, eczema, psoriasis, and as we said yesterday, one of the biggest bummers of teenagehood, as well as adults, and that's acne, breaking out. If you know a kid who's breaking out, or if you're breaking out, Please recognize there is a major link to breakouts, pimple formation, zit formation, like all skin issues, to essential fatty acids or the lack thereof. A lot of folks are resistant to using essential fatty acids as if they're breaking out, if they have acne, the ultimate EFAs and the ultimate EFA plus and other fatty acid supplements because of their oily nature. It doesn't seem, it's almost like counterintuitive. Why would you take a fat if you have oily skin? Well, it turns out that EFAs play several major roles when it comes to the formation of pimples if you're dealing with acne. For one thing, because of the relationship fatty acids have to skin oils or skin lipids as dermatologists call them, sebum, without enough oils, without enough the correct essential fatty acid oils, particularly omega-6 oils, skin sebum becomes sticky and it's more likely to clog pores. It's more likely to stay on the surface of the skin, giving the skin a shine. So if you're dealing with oily skin, you don't want to stay away from EFAs, you want to start supplementing with EFAs, particularly the omega-6 essential fatty acids. Now I know you hear from nutritionists that we get too many omega-6s and not omega-3s, it doesn't quite work that way, because even though we get the oils that contain, or should contain, the omega-6s, corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, soy oil. Unfortunately, because of processing, we don't get them. So we end up EFA deficient, omega-6 deficient, even though we're getting the oils that should contain those omega-6s. If you're breaking out, if your skin is oily, chances are pretty good you're omega-6 deficient. Where do you get omega-6s? Well, you get them from foods, food oils. But why take a chance? If you're breaking out, get on the ultimate EFAs. Get on the ultimate EFA+. plus. Now, second mechanism for EFA deficiency causing breakouts involves the outside parts of cells. Skin cells have a coating, like all cells. It's called a membrane. And that membrane is made up in large part of essential fatty acids. It's made up in large part of omega-6 
essential fatty acids under deficiency conditions. You don't make healthy skin cells. Skin cells don't divide correctly. They don't grow correctly. They end up clogging pores. And in combination with the oil that's sticky from the EFA deficiency, you end up with a pimple. Then the skin bacteria that live on the skin normally, acne-causing bacteria that live on the skin normally start to feed on these dead cells and on this oil and bingo, you got your full-fledged acne pimple. But where does it start? It starts in large part from essential fatty acid deficiency. And then there's a third mechanism and that's the inflammatory process. Under conditions of essential fatty acids, the inflammatory process is more likely to kick in. Under conditions of imbalances in omega-6s and omega-3s, the inflammatory process is more likely to kick in. In fact, any time there is a long-term inflammatory issue, which means all chronic degenerative diseases, whether we're talking cancer, whether we're talking atherosclerosis and heart disease, whether we're talking diabetes, whether we're talking digestive issues, or whether we're talking skin health issues, acne, rosacea, psoriasis, any time there is a long-term chronic inflammatory condition that is not improving, you can assume essential fatty acids are involved. This inflammatory process is, that, that's in large part driven by EFA deficiency is the foundation of health or disease. The, uh, the inflammatory process, the way we inflame, which is like a beaver's dam, as we've said so many times, inflammation is a protective response. It's in large part driven by a deficiency in essential fatty acids or an imbalance in those essential fatty acids. And this inflammatory process is the key building block that needs to be addressed if we're going to be healthy. Health is so simple, you guys. It is so tragic for anybody to have to deal with a chronic long-term degenerative disease. Heart disease is a classic example. You hear about cholesterol and heart disease. Do you know, cholesterol to this day, cholesterol production in the liver has not been linked to heart disease. Oh, they'll tell you, oh yeah, we see cholesterol in plaques. That means if we stop the production in the liver, we're going to get better. No. The cholesterol is in the, is in the arteries, it's in the heart because, it's in the cardiovascular system because of inflammation. It's a protective response. Cholesterol ends up uh, acting like a band-aid, protecting the cardiovascular system from inflammation. At its core, heart disease, the leading killer, the leading cause of death in this country and around the world is an inflammatory health condition. By the way, did you know essential fatty acids actually act like statin drugs? They're natural statin drugs. Does your doctor know that? EFAs act in the same fashion as statin drugs to suppress cholesterol production, but without toxicity without the toxicity of statins, without the toxicity of pharmacology. So if you're worried about cholesterol, that's just an, another reason to make sure that you get on your ultimate essential fatty acids. Health is so simple and it's so tragic that anybody has to be sick. We eat stuff, stuff gets in the blood. If the stuff is usable by the body, the body's going to take advantage of it either immediately or maybe stored for later use. If it's not, the body will eliminate it. And if it's a poison, the body will detoxify it. So pretty much that's pretty much it. The usable stuff is called nutrition, the non-usable stuff is fiber, and the poison is everything else. And that includes excess glucose and fructose, excess sugar, which is not obviously a problem under ordinary conditions, but in excess, it acts like a toxic substance. If it's not nutrition, if it's not protein, fats, carbohydrates, minerals, good bacteria, phytonutrients, and if it's not fiber or water, the body will see it as a poison that needs to be detoxified. And then to make matters worse, under conditions of nutritional deficiency, the body goes into survival, uh, uh, survival state, it goes into emergency processing, and this makes it much harder for the body to build. And if we're not processing our foods correctly, even good foods can be to become uh, toxic, and that's called leaky gut syndrome. Fortunately, the body's got an amazing detox system, and so for the most part, it works so efficiently, we don't even know we've been ingesting toxicity. We don't even know that we have a problem with leaky gut. But over the course of time, it can be overloaded, and that's when disease shows up. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. If you've got questions about health and nutrition prescript or prescription drugs, we've got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. All right, we're back on 
the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. we got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or the Truth Skin Health products, you can head over to Truth treatments.com for truth skin health products or you can head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com if you're interested in learning more about the longevity products you can also call 866-735-2470 866-735-2470 all right uh, let's see here from the journal lipids and health and disease love this essential fatty acids and their metabolites could function as statin drugs and ace enzyme inhibitors and antiarrhythmics, and antihypertensives, and antiatherosclerotics, and anti-inflammatories, and cell protectors, and cardioprotective molecules, heart protective molecules. This is from a very highly regarded journal, Lipids and Health and Disease. Now, when was the last time a medical professional ever used essential fatty acids instead of a, a beta blocker? or instead of a, a calcium channel blocker, or instead of Motrin for that matter. EFAs act as anti-inflammatories. And inflammation is the foundation of all health and disease, or all disease, I should say. From, uh, from the journal Current Alzheimer's Research, lipid-based diets effectively combat Alzheimer's disease. How do you like that? Did you catch the cover of Time Magazine this week? Doctors are still looking for a magical cure for Alzheimer's disease. For all the money drug companies are spending on trying to find a drug for Alzheimer's disease, this is according to Time Magazine, only one pill, only one pharmaceutical has come out that supposedly treats Alzheimer's disease. It doesn't even treat Alzheimer's disease. It makes you feel a little bit better. But it turns out that the ketogenic diet, which is associated with fats, and we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet tomorrow because there's a major, major link to, to uh, uh, short-chain fatty acids. Yesterday we talked about the short-chain fatty acids. There's a major relationship between the short-chain fatty acids and the ketogenic diet. Ketones come from vinegar. Did you know ketones come from apple cider vinegar? Did you know ketones come from butter? Between ketones, the ketogenic diet, between essential fatty acids, between your fatty vitamins, vitamins D, E, A, and K, so many of the things that we take for granted as parts of the aging process and as parts of the disease process can be reduced or eliminated. Inflammation is a protective mechanism. It's not a bad thing. It's this balance of inflammation and anti-inflammation that is the problem. And when we talk about uh, inflammation, excessive inflammation, what we're really talking about is dirty blood. That's the key to everything. Behind all disease, you're going to find dirty blood. Cleaning the blood is the, fa the ultimate way to reduce any health challenge. The blood delivers energy. The blood produces energy. It doesn't just deliver energy. It actually produces energy. It delivers oxygen. It delivers nutrients. It removes toxicity. And as it's circulating around the body, it's actually generating an electrical charge. Red blood cells are the key to the movement of the circulatory system. When we talk about clogged and dirty blood, what we're really talking about is red blood cells that aren't able to move. Well, guess what? Red blood cells need essential fatty acids too. In fact, under conditions of essential fatty acids, red blood cells are likely to get sticky, likely to clog up. So in addition to the poisons that are in the blood that are that are slowing down the circulatory process. Now you've got to deal, if you're dealing with EFA deficiencies, you've got to deal with defective cell membranes. In terms of the triangle of disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex, what we're really talking about is a lack of the blood's ability or a reduction in the blood's ability to produce energy, to deliver energy. The blood is not delivering energy effectively. At the digestive system level, it's not gathering energy. It's not accumulating energy from food. It's not releasing energy from food. At the level of the blood sugar system, it's not storing and releasing energy. And at the level of the adrenal thyroid, it's not allocating energy correctly. And all of this is related to the blood and to a certain extent essential fatty acids. Nutrition works because it helps the body utilize energy. It helps the body gather energy, it helps the body store and release energy, and it helps the body allocate energy. You have your macronutrients, your macronutrients act as logs on the fire, 
and you got your micronutrients that act as the ma magical pixie dust that activates the whole thing. And by the way, one of the best sources of fats, in, uh, best sources of energy, in addition to fats, is carbs. And we beat up on carbs all the time, forgetting that carbs are the way nature stores its energy. And really, fats are a type of carbohydrate. Fats are an extra, uh, uh, extra strength version of a carbohydrate. They're an extra strength carbohydrate. In whole foods, carbohydrates are an important component. And that means fats and that means sugars. But you gotta have the micronutrients to use the energy from the fats and the sugars. Without the micronutrients, fats and sugars can be a problem. And this is where a, a dysglycemia, this is where messed up blood sugar becomes a health issue. Messed up blood sugar is not so much about the carbs, but it's about the processed carbs that don't have the vitamins with them. You need carbs, you need vegetable carbs, you need vegetable sugars. The body depends on sugar for energy. Now, it can use ketones for energy, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but for the most part, the brain needs carbohydrates. The uh, cells of the body need carbohydrates, but they need to have the nutrients with the carbohydrates. So it's not the carbs that are necessarily the problem. Over time, the effect of long-term sugar and fat ingestion without the B vitamins, without the chromium, without the selenium, without the vanadium, without your omega fatty acids, omega-3s and omega-6s, creates a burden on the body, and this is where we end up with diabetes, and this is where we end up with messed up blood sugar, i.e. dysglycemia. Diabetes was a death sentence at one time until they discovered insulin, Di people used to die when they had diabetes. The lives of a, 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 an insulin diabetic was short. Many of them died in their 20s and 30s. These days, death from diabetes is more of a long-term issue. We can keep people alive. But if you factor in its relationship to heart disease, diabetes relationship to cancer, diabetes relationship to Alzheimer's, diabetes relationship to what's called metabolic syndrome, which is high blood pressure and kidney disease, among other things, Alzheimer's disease, it's a leading cause. It's the leading cause of death in this country. And there's a major relationship between inflammation and diabetes, which means there's a major relationship between fats and diabetes and EFA deficiencies in diabetes. And even though EFAs don't directly affect blood sugar control, in the long term, EFA deficiency is going to affect the diabetic condition. Diabetes is just so common and, and messed up blood sugar is just so common, we consider it routine. We consider it to be a normal part of aging. But I'm here to tell you folks, not only is it not routine, and not only is it a serious problem, and you don't have to be diagnosed as a full-fledged diabetic, you can still have messed up blood sugar and still be dealing with the effects of messed up blood sugar without a diagnosis. But here's the thing, it's 100% preventable and 100% reversible. Diabetes is 100% preventable and reversible. I'm not here to beat up anybody about eating behavior. I'm not here to make anybody feel wrong about nutritional deficiencies or not being on a nutritional supplement program. But the fact of the matter is, if diabetes is a nutritional deficiency disease, if diabetes is an eating disease, and if diabetes is a leading cause of death, doesn't it make sense to simply control eating behavior and get on a good nutritional supplement program and to make sure you're using essential fatty acid supplements like the Ultimate EFAs and Ultimate EFA Plus. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010. It's our number. We'll get your phone calls and got more good health information coming up. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, 844-236-6010. is our number. This is the good news about health and nutrition, about health challenges. If you're dealing with a health challenge, you don't need to be dealing with a health challenge. If you understand how nutrition works, if you understand how the body works, it's not that complicated, really. We're told it's complicated. We're encouraged to think it's complicated. We're encouraged to go outside ourselves. We're encouraged to go to authorities, doctors, medical experts. But we don't need medical experts. And the proof of the, uh, the, proof of the fact that we don't need medical experts is in the fact that we got more doctors per capita than any other country in the world, and we're the sickest country on the planet. We got more drugs and more expensive procedures and diagnostics than any other country in the world, and we're simultaneously the sickest country anywhere in the world. Clearly, there's something wrong, folks. And what's wrong, I would present, is that we've lost track of the simplicity, the ease of getting healthy. As far as fats go, tomorrow we'll talk about the ketogenic diet, how important that can be for diabetics, how important that can be for folks dealing with Alzheimer's disease, how important that can be if you're trying to lose weight, how important that can be for muscle building. 
The ketogenic diet is a way of producing energy elements, energy chemicals called ketones by not eating a lot of food and by making sure you're getting enough fat and by making sure you're getting enough protein and by, and by making sure you're not eating a lot of refined sugars. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking about fats and skin health, fats and hormones and fats and overall health on the bright side. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first call of the day. Carl, the Truth Raider. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Good morning, Pharmacist Ben. Hey, I Greetings. want to contribute to the conversation today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going okay. on? Okay. Well, this may seem morose, but we need to talk about it anyway. And something I've known for 10 or 15 years, but I just never got a chance to get around to calling in and talking about it with you. Yeah. Well, our chemistry is, is such that what, depending on what we eat, yes, how it processes through the body, I I found something quite uh, quite uh, I guess it's specific or, or intense uh, the intense process of digestion through the body. Say for example, I'm guilty of this. I enjoy a nice good cup of uh, hot coffee in the morning. I make my own version of Starbucks coffee. Okay. Or, so to speak. Where, where are you I going here, bro? I get. I got a bunch I, of coffee. Tell me. Tell me what, what's the bottom line. I use these creamers that are flavored like vanilla, French, and all all these really nice mocha and caramel uh, additives of the uh, creamers. But if I have too much of it over a period of time, it processes and goes right down to the feet. What, what does that mean to your feet? I get the I'll, I'll get you know I'll get the deposits that come out through my feet. I'm not I'm not understanding, Carl, the truth writer. You're confusing me here. You're drinking. You're saying the cream goes down to your feet. Yes, it comes out of the body. If you have too much of something, toxins it will through the feet itself through the body through diathesis. Yeah, I've seen those. I've seen those those foot foot pad things and f- like foot bath things they use where you, the 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 water gets real dirty when you sit in there. They run an electrical current through the water. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, eight to ten years ago, I tried that. All I had was just yellow coming out uh, when I when I used one of those. And other people would have sludge coming out of their feet. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, I haven't really investigated that too much, but I have seen it, and I, I've actually been kind of curious about it. Do you know any brand names or anything for that? I'll, well, the Kanuki is called the Kanuki brand. Uh, I think that's K-A-N-U-K-I? The I think so. Yeah, I'm, I may be incorrect spelling, but it's, it's called Kanuki. Okay, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do some I'm going to do some research on that, and I'll talk about that here in the next few days because that is something that I've been intrigued about, and I never did follow up on it. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Appreciate Certainly. it, Carl, the truth writer. All right, buddy, I got to move on. Have a good day, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you, Carl. Take care, man. All right, Mary in Michigan, welcome to the bright side. What's going on? Hi, Ben. Um, uh, I heard you say the other day something about um, uh, someone in the uh, some health guru and. Um, how he was taking his supplements and he wasn't taking them correctly. And I've, I've been I've been playing around with some things, but I have a very hard time digesting fat. Okay. And I take all the things that you tell me, you know, that you tell us we should take okay. to assist in 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 the fat digestion. Point. Is there a way to take them? <laughs> yes, there is a way to take them. Now, now what happens when you eat fats? You feel bloated and, and discomfort. No, that kind of... no, I get a pain between my shoulder blades, and I get I get terrible gas. Okay, have you had your gallbladder checked out? Well, I I have. Do you have a gallbladder? I have a gallbladder, and the walls of the gallbladder are thickened, and they told me that was from years of inflammation. Yeah, you got a bile issue and a gallbladder issue, and maybe also a liver issue is what it sounds like to me, or maybe even a pancreas issue. Those are the, those are the major structures that are involved in fat metabolism, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, and also to a certain extent the intestine, by the way. And it could be okay. any of those systems. So here's the f- a couple of ideas for you. First of all, grind up your fatty foods. Make it easier to process. Okay. Secondly, with, with all fatty foods, take lesithin. You know what that is? Lesithin? Yes, I take okay. that. Are you already using lesithin? How much are you nope. using? Oh, I don't know. I, 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 was, I was using the granules and taking like a, like a heaping teaspoon. That's good. That's good. Uh, with every, okay. that's, that's plenty. And then uh, are you using bile salts? Yes. Okay, Excess, extra bile salts and digestive enzymes. Okay. Are you using pancreatic enzymes? Yes. Pancreatin? Yes. 
Okay, good. Sound like you're doing all you're doing all the right things here. Okay. Well, I'm wondering uh, if I'm ap- taking them correctly. <laughs> well, no, you're taking them correctly. Are you acidifying? Okay. Are, are you using acid? Uh, are you using uh, something acidic like apple cider vinegar with your meals yes. to activate your enzymes? Okay. Then I'm suspecting you got a liver problem. I'm also suspecting that you're postmenopausal and maybe has some estrogen issues. All right. Well, are you I'm using... 69, so I'm well past post. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. You, that's very common, by the way. As women, as estrogen levels drop, fat metabolism tends to suffer, and this is somewhat common. And women who are postmenopausal are more susceptible to gallbladder issues and, and fat processing issues. So you may want to start using some uh, some uh, hormone support. Uh, a couple of things, phytoestrogens. If you, I don't know if you've heard of that term, phytoestrogens, plant estrogens, perhaps could help you. Uh, and okay. then also, uh, uh, you get those from uh, from legumes. Most that's the best sources are legumes. Okay, I eat a lot of beans. Okay. Uh, Okay. Are, are you having problems with beans, or do you process no, your beans? No, no, I really don't have any problem with good beans. Good for you. That's awesome, then. That's awesome. If you don't have problems with beans, they could be a, they could be definitely be good food. A lot of folks do have problems, but if you don't have problems mm-hmm. with foods, with uh, uh, beans, those can be good foods also. Those can be um, very good foods. Got some a lot of nutrition there. And then also uh, progesterone cream. Uh, yes, con- I do that. I do you're that. You're using progesterone cream. You're doing everything. Yes. And you're on the Healthy <laughs> yes. Start. You're on the Healthy Start Pack, of course. Yeah. Okay, and then what else are you taking? What other supplements are you using? Uh, well, let's see. I take I take choline. That's uh, awesome. Taurine. Um, yeah. Are you using taurine and glycine? Taurine. And, yes, I am. Yes. Okay. I, I don't know about the glycine. I know I'm taking the taurine. Yeah. Then you. Here's what you got to do. It sounds to me that like you you're doing okay with the manufacturing of the bile and the and the production of the bile. I'm guessing that you got some kind of liver issue going on. And that means that you got, if you have a liver issue going on, then you're going to want to start to work with the digestive system in terms of food elimination, the elimination diet. And that means doing mm-hmm. a food diary, mm-hmm. keeping, keeping, a, uh, keeping a, uh, a good record of everything you eat and your digestive symptomology associated with those foods and then starting to eliminate foods. You may be having a problem that's not related to fats, that's related to foods, uh, food toxins and food allergens. Uh, the second thing you might want to do, if you're not already doing it, is make sure you're using the probiotics, good bacteria, which you probably are, and then, yes, eating, ferment- mm-hmm. and, and then eating fermented foods with your fatty foods. Right. Oh, oh, with them. Okay. With I got them it. together. The fatty okay. foods and the, and the fermented foods together. So as you're, okay. eating, as you're eating your fats, chew on a little kimchi or a little sauerkraut or something like that, and that may help. There's acids in the, in the fermented foods that can also help with fat digestion. You want to hang on? If you can sure. hang on, we'll finish up and come back from our break. And uh, if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Mary in Michigan. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hey, Mary, you there? Yeah. All right, here's the dealio. Uh, you're doing everything. Uh, every, sounds like from a nutritional standpoint, you're doing everything you need to do to be building bile and to help you to be processing your foods correctly in terms of digestive enzymes and probiotics, etc. But here's the thing about bile. In addition to helping your body process fats, that's bile, one of bile's main roles, bile's also important for clearing out toxins, especially toxic estrogens. And so if you have a liver issue or your, your body's not, clear, not processing estrogen correctly, I'm assuming you're not on prescription drugs, no. but if you are on prescription drugs, bile's responsible for clearing out those prescription drugs. Also, if right. you have some kind of food toxin or food allergens, things that aren't getting processed correctly in terms of uh, uh, foods that you're eating, that's going to stick a clog up the bile as well. In fact, gallbladder issues in general, and cholesterol issues for that matter, stones, I should say, are usually associated with clogged up sticky bile. Much like the blood gets clogged up, the, the bile gets clogged up as well. So you may want to start, uh, you may want to uh, practice an intermittent fast. In addition to the things I was telling you about the elimination diet and, and looking for food toxins and food allergens, you may want to do some intermittent fasting and see if, uh, see if when you uh, start eating again, your, uh, your ability to process those fats improves as you gradually clear out the bile through things like caloric restrictions caloric restriction and intermittent fasting. And then last but not least, and I'm going to let you go because i got a bunch of calls here, don't necessarily assume that it's the fats that are causing the problem. It could also be perhaps some kind of uh, sugars that are causing the problem as well. So 
it sounds like you do have a fat issue, but you may you want to clear out other food uh, food uh, uh, allergens or food toxins as a source of the pain or the source of this discomfort by doing the f elimination diet and by doing uh, a food diary and then also making sure that you're cleaning out your bile, doing all the strategies for cleaning out your bile. But other than that, it sounds like you're doing everything correctly. Well, right, by Mary? taking by taking yeah. bile is that is that keeping my body from from my gallbladder no. from pushing the bile out, or no. is it okay? No, but you're not taking bile. Take? You're taking bile salts. Okay. Okay. That's not the same thing. Okay. No, not the same thing. All right. And should I take that before I start eating, or after, or what? Uh, you want to take it with your meals. Wait, okay. So okay. All right. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. Thanks for your call, Mayor. Appreciate it. All right, Justin in Oklahoma. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, doing good. Um. What I was wondering is my, my son, he's 15 years old, and uh, he's been diagnosed ADHD, and okay. uh, he's got uh, OCD, or I'm sorry, ODD. And uh, uh, then this last year, they said that he may have a touch of Tourette's. Um, okay. We've got him on Intuitive, uh, Concerta, and Prozac. I hate prescriptions. Oh, that's I'm, too I'm bad. I'm not a fan of them. All right, well, let's... Um, let's Let's help you out here, okay? First of all, when you say ODD, are you talking about what they call oppositional defiance disorder? Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's, you're the first guy I've heard tell me that somebody was diagnosed that way. I mean, I've heard of it, but never actually heard somebody was diagnosed with that. Oppositional defiance disorder is one of, one of my favorite uh, psychiatric disorders in terms of its, uh, I don't mean to, to make light of the problem, but really what it is is it's defined as a, a, a resistance to authority, right? That's yep. what your kid has. Well, a lot of us have that. You know, you don't have to have a, a psychological diagnosis of a disease to have a resistance to authority. But anyway, that's kind of just an interesting little aside. Here's the deal with ADD and ADHD. I, and I'm always a little bit hesitant to talk about mental and emotional kinds of things from a nutritional standpoint because you've got to deal with the emotional aspects of this. Many times ADD kids are just really curious and haven't had their energy channeled in the correct fashion. Over the course of time, that can lead to problems with depression. If you don't have an outlet for your curiosity and you're constantly squelched, your curiosity is constantly squelched, that can lead to depression, especially with little kids who, who don't know that they're not at fault, who blame themselves. So I'm always a little bit hesitant to, to use nutrition to treat an emotional or mental kind of issue. But that having been said, there are some nutritional deficiencies that can lead to these kinds of problems, particularly in the B vitamins. So the first, and the B vitamins are used up by sugar. So the more sugar we eat, the more B more likely we'll be to be B vitamin deficient. In addition, the B vitamins are water soluble, so they're urinated out quickly. And if you're not replacing them, it's it's again very easy to become deficient in these vitamins. The, you can think of the B vitamins as the brain vitamins. And so make sure that the kid is on the B vitamins, especially after he eats. In fact, everybody should be using the B, B vitamins with meals and after meals because the B vitamins help us process energy from foods and deficiencies are common. They help us process sugar from foods and deficiencies are common. Where are you going to get your Bs? Well, you can get them from veggies. That's one of the best sources. You can get them from eggs. That's another good source. Liver is a good source. But use the BTT, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. With all meals, have your kid use the BTT. What's, what's his name, by the way? Your son. Chance. chance? Have yep. Chance use, have him use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine with meals, also first thing in the morning. If he's, if he's eating things like Pop-Tarts and, and, and sweet cereals and fruit juices and Coke, that's going to make matters much worse. And it can cause, th these kinds of foods can cause a, a drop in blood sugar that can exacerbate issues with depression. Interestingly, the Bs are not only the brain vitamins, they're also blood sugar vitamins. So using the Bs will also help him process blood sugar. Zinc is a must-have for the brain for teenagers, for children, even for adults. And zinc is also involved in sugar metabolism. So keep, uh, have the kid, get the kid on 50 milligrams, five zero milligrams of zinc picolinate. Uh, another thing is omega-3 fatty acids. Again, very, very important for the brain. I didn't get a chance yesterday to talk about the highly electrical nature of the omega-3s. We talked about the electrical nature of the omega-6s, but the omega-3s are even more electrical 
They got three double bonds. Yesterday we talked about double bonds, how two double bonds, the omega sixes have two double bonds, that makes them really electrical. Well, the threes, which are much harder to find and much more likely to be deficient, we're, we are much more likely to be deficient in, are super important for brain health and for the health of the entire nervous system and the health of the eyes too. So making sure he's getting enough omega threes, it's very unlikely that if he's not that if he's not supplementing, it's very unlikely he's getting enough omega threes. You can get omega threes from fish, you can get omega threes from eggs, you can get omega threes from good dairy, uh, but the best way to get your omega threes is from the ultimate EFAs. Have him do three capsules in the morning, three capsules in the evening. If he has any issues processing those fats, have him use those with digestive enzymes. And then of course the healthy star pack that just will give him his mighty ninety essential nutrients. If he has a problem with sugar, this is the last thing, Justin, if he has a problem with sugar or weaning himself off of sugar, get him on more protein. Kids are growing, so they're burning through protein. Under deficiencies of protein, when we're low on protein, we're going to crave sugar. So if he has a problem weaning off of bread or pasta or these foods that spike his blood sugar and then cause a subsequent hypo or low blood sugar condition, have him use more protein uh, and especially things like whey protein if he can handle those, uh, handle that, and then also an amino acid called glutamine. G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E, which is super important for sugar metabolism, immune system, muscle building, brain health, uh, and all, not sugar, uh, I don't say sugar metabolism, but for sugar cravings, as well as muscle, muscle building and, and the immune system and liver health and a whole bunch of other things. You can get glutamine powder at a health food store, use half a teaspoonful a day, just put it in water, it doesn't have any taste. Or you can mix it in with a whey protein smoothie, that's how I do mine. All right, Justin, I got to motivate. Thank you so much for your call, bro. I hope we, hope we helped you out. Carlos in Florida, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Carlos. Hello. Hey, Carlos. What's hey. up, man? Hey, what's going on? I just, uh, I've been uh, taking the BTT. I don't take it every day, but when I do, my first P is, um, is orange. Like highlighter orange. Yeah, that's I'm highlighter sorry. orange. That, <laughs> that that doesn't, it just, that's, that's some of the B vitamins that are coming out. One in particular, vitamin B2. Riboflavin, if you ever heard that term, riboflavin means yellow body, and uh, that gives the BTT its characteristic color. Uh, so you probably are excreting a little riboflavin, nothing to worry about. Oh, all right. How's it okay. All right. No, Thank I can you. see you'd be concerned. I'd be concerned, too, if I didn't know. Thanks for your call, bro. Have a good day, <laughs> man. All right. Justin in Canada, you get the last word. What's going on? Justin. Hello, Justin. Did I get the button here for Justin? Justin, are you there? Hey, Justin. Uh, we got Justin? What's going on? Did we lose Justin? Jason, maybe. I'm sorry, Jason. My bad. My bad. No, What's going no, on, Jason? No problem. What's Quick going question. on? Uh, I know we're right almost out of time. Uh, my son is five years old. I uh, went to a speech therapist uh, for his slur and his snoring. She suggested we go back to the pediatrician and take a look at his adenoids. So yeah, apparently <laughs> we had the x-ray. He has an enlarged adenoid. So they put him on monotasone. Well, here's the deal. The adenoids are part of the lymphatic system. That means his lymph is clogged. The lymph is your waste management system. It's how the body eliminates poisons. Anytime there's an issue with the tonsils or the adenoids or, or really the lymph in general, you're looking at some kind of toxin that's getting into the circulatory system. Almost always it has to do with foods and dairy, dairy in particular. If he's a milk drinker, have him stop the milk. Uh, okay. It could be gluten. It could be grains. Uh, but it's definitely it's, the first thing you want to do is approach the diet. Also get him on good bacteria, probiotics. How old, how old is your kid? Five. Five. They have them on uh, the steroid uh, monotezone. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's not going to help. So, uh, if you could call me tomorrow, we could finish up, Jason. There's more to talk yeah, about, no but problem. we're just out of time. time. Probiotics. Don't forget good bacteria, folks. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow, ketogenic diet and and how to use ketones for Alzheimer's and diabetes. We'll uh, we'll be back at you with more good health information uh, tomorrow. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful day. Take care, folks. We'll talk to y'all later.